It's been only 5 months uh, since S22, but looks like cinema's development speed is not slowing down anytime soon. So here we are again, let's talk about R23. This is a big release, there are advancements in uh, several areas of uh, Cinema 4D, but R23's marquee feature is animation, not only day-to-day -day workflow improvements, but also incredible additions to character animation. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. This is a feature all character animators will appreciate. Now we can easily create and store poses of our characters for later use. To help with the organization of our libraries, we have the ability to store poses in different folders. Here I've uh, created a small group for the eyes and another one for the mouth. Let's create one more pose for the eyes to see how it works. I'll uh, lower the eyebrows a little bit and I'll also adjust the eyelids. Now with all the controls selected, we just click on the new pose icon and we have our new pose stored. What's missing is a thumbnail for the pose. We can easily do that by clicking the capture icon. Once ready to animate, we can just get rid of this window and have this more compact window that shows only the stored poses. And now we can just pick the pose we want, adjust the strength if needed, set a keyframe, and our animation is on the way. But you don't necessarily need to be a character animator to take advantage of the pose library. We can just use it to save different states of an object. Here for example, I have this uh, parametric stair object, and because our project calls for different types of stairs, I've saved a bunch of different states. Now we can easily pick the one we need without having to go through the parameters to get a specific type of stairs. So that's the pose library. This next feature will also be greatly appreciated by character animators. With uh, R23, we can create character definitions, which in turn allow us to match and transfer motion between different character skeletons. As long as characters use the same definition, the animation data can be transferred between the two without any issues, even if the rigs are using a different axis or coordinates. Next up, these two high quality templates for the character object allow us to easily set up a character for animation. With the Toon Rig, we can achieve all the bendy and twisty goodness we know and love from cartoons, while with the Face Rig, we can have a production rigged face with just a couple of clicks. Setting up a Face Rig is now within everyone's reach. The results speak for themselves. Another helpful addition to the animation toolset is the Delta Mosh Deformer. Its purpose is really simple, to smooth the deformation occurring before it. Here for example we have a character set up with the default hard weights. Because we haven't made any adjustments, the result is far from perfect, but watch what happens when we add the Delta Mosh Deformer. Without adjusting the weights at all, we get a perfectly usable result. Kinda feels like magic. But aside from the character related features, there are also several quality of life improvements for animation in general. The auto key behavior has changed to provide more comfort and prevent unwanted keyframes while adjusting non animated objects in our scene. We just need to add the first keyframe, and auto key will happen from there on. This simple command helps us speed things up immensely since we don't have to individually adjust the tangents of our keyframes anymore. In this example, only this sphere has some easing applied to its keyframes. All other objects have a linear animation. To smooth out the animation, we just copy the ease from this sphere. And then with all other objects selected, we click on Paste Ease. Now all of them have a nice ease applied to them. Another great time saver is the ability to copy an animation from an entire hierarchy of objects and paste it to another equivalent hierarchy. Here only the spheres are animated. Instead of manually animating the cubes, we can just copy the animation from the spheres and paste it to the cubes. And that's it! We now also have the ability to isolate the animated parameters of an object. We just need to click on the filter icon and enable the animation tracks option. Now only the animated parameters are shown. We can also hunt down a specific track really fast on the timeline. Just 
type in part of the name and all tracks with the same name will show up. We also have a bunch of really useful improvements when it comes to markers and the timeline. We now have visual feedback of the range we're on in the form of uh, an interactive HUD element in the viewport, but most importantly, we can now set the preview range to the markers we've already set up. So now we can quickly go to the next range and only that range will be visible in the timeline. As you can see, this release is packed with animation features, but we have lots more. S22 brought several changes and improvements to UV editing in cinema. Development in UVs continues in R23 with even more helpful additions, making UV manipulation an incredibly easy task. Let's take the Align UV Islands command as an example. We can just select a single edge from each UV island and then click on the command. And just like that, our UV islands are nicely aligned in the UV editor. There's also the UV straighten command. Just select the areas that need adjusting, and with a single click, all of our edges are now straightened out. But what if our UVs need more help than just a couple of edges here and there? Just select all polys and hit the UV Rectangularize command, and Cinema will try to create a rectangular selection with nicely aligned points on the X and Y. We can go one step further by clicking on the equidistant distribution. By creating UVs that occupy a similar amount of space, we ensure that our textures won't appear distorted. Another incredibly helpful addition is the ability to use all of Cinema's snapping options in UVs. So if, for example, we want to align our UVs to the UV grid, we can do that easily by just enabling the snapping options and moving the points around until they snap to the grid. We can also snap to edges or snap to pixels. With all these additions, we can get some very clean looking UVs and with relative ease. But UV manipulation is only half a battle. UV previewing is also equally important. And R23 certainly delivers. We now have, for example, the ability to preview UVs of multiple objects all at once. In S22, we can only check one UV at a time, making the creation of a single texture for multiple parts a rather involved process. But in R23, this is a piece of cake. We just select all the objects sharing the same texture, and the UVs of all objects are displayed at once in the UV editor. This helps us ensure there are no overlaps between UVs, and to make sure all UVs take the maximum amount of space needed. There's also a lot more flexibility when previewing the UVs distortions. In S22, we can only preview that in the UV editor, but in R23, we can preview that in the viewport as well. We now also have quite a few quantizing options. This allows us to make very accurate transformations and as a result get very clean and predictable results in our textures. Let's say we want to have this rotated 32.5 degrees, <laughs> we can do that. We want to scale 15.4%, we can do that as well. But what kind of a monster would do that? Let's do 15%. <laughs> so that's UVs. Next up. <laughs> nope, this is not a mistake, we're still talking about Cinema 4D. Magic Ball Looks is now part of Cinema's toolset. We're not talking about a partial implementation of uh, Magic Bullet's tools. The complete toolset is available through Cinema. To access it, we just enable the Magic Bullet Looks post effect in our render settings, send the render to Magic Bullet Looks, and we're good to go. We can color grade the image with uh, Colorista, add lens effects like Tilt Shift, create color streak effects, add film print stock, pretty much anything we can do in Magic Bullet Looks we can do from within Cinema. The grading will be applied at the end of rendering like any other post effect in Cinema 4D. What is really cool though is that Magic Bullet Looks doesn't only work for our picture viewer renders, it also works in the viewport. Yep, all of the effects work in real time and as you can see they can really transform a scene. Have a look at the streaks produced by the lights as we rotate the camera around. As you can see, we can get some great looking results just by rendering the viewport and using a nice grading on top. And since we're in the topic of the viewport, it's the perfect time to discuss our next feature. Now we can achieve realistic reflections in the viewport with the improvement of screen space reflections. In earlier versions of uh, Cinema, we could only preview reflections in a simpler manner. This is how the hallway scene would look in uh, S22. Not bad by any means, but let's see what will happen when we enable screen space reflections. 
the floor reflects the surrounding geometry, making our scene a lot more convincing. If we now also enable Magic Bullet Looks, it's staggering how much of a bump in preview quality these two features alone bring to the viewport. I expect to see some incredible looking viewport renders in the coming months. Time now to jump into one really exciting feature, a glimpse into cinema's future. Material nodes were introduced in R20, and now in R23 we get to see nodes expand on areas other than materials, more specifically to cinema's object system. This feature is still in development, but it's very exciting to see how nodes will transform cinema. At the moment, there is no representation of the nodes in the object manager, but that will come in the future. For now, all of the work needs to happen in the node editor. I hear you asking, what's so special about nodes? Well, I'm glad you asked, imaginary person. <laughs> the biggest benefit has to do with the clear view of dependencies. Let's take this uh, setup as an example. In a glimpse, we can see how the setup works. We have a sphere, which is used in a spiral distribution, and all parameters of the distribution are controlled by time, and more specifically, the frame number. The bendiformer applied on the spiral distribution is also controlled by time. As you can see, with nodes, we get this better overview of how a setup works. The scene nodes are also taking advantage of Cinema's new core, and as a result, the performance is great. For example, in this setup, we can increase the number of trees, and we can still navigate our scene without any issues. Or for example here, there are 250,000 cubes in the scene, and we can navigate and make adjustments without having to wait. With nodes, we can also access data in a far deeper level, and control procedurally every aspect of our objects. Apart from the incredible power, control, and performance of nodes, there's also one more thing worth mentioning, and that's the continuous improvement of the nodes and the nodal interface. Since the introduction of uh, material nodes in R20, users had a lot of time to work with them in their projects. As a result, Maxim had received a lot of valuable feedback on what works and what doesn't work with that implementation. In R23, Maxim addressed all this feedback with a completely redesigned UI. It's worth mentioning here that nodal materials and scene nodes share the exact same UI. Now, let's see what was actually changed. The first task at hand was to reduce scrolling and allow for more nodes to be visible at once. To do that, the size of the nodes was reduced significantly. The color of the nodes has also been tweaked. The two-tone nodes are gone, and now all of them have just one color. There's also an icon at the top of each node, making different nodes easier to distinguish. There's also a persistent secondary title, making node types easier to recognize even after the node is renamed. The nodal manager also got a facelift. The confusing row of icons at the top of the window is now gone, and the asset area is now easier to browse. It morphed into a two-column view, and all nodes are color-coded, helping with the recognition of each node. There are also a ton of other small improvements, like uh, improved filtering, easier to toggle states, coloring of the wires depending on the data type uh, flowing through it, intelligent node creation based on the terms the user searched for, and lots more. With all these UI changes and the incredible power of uh, scene nodes, I cannot wait to see all the crazy setups all of you will come up with. But we still have a lot more features to talk about, so let's move on to the next one. Cinema's content browser is home to some of the highest quality assets out there. I mean, take a look at this. At this point, this is just showing off. <laughs> but I digress. On this release, we have once more some great additions. The grass elements introduced in S22 are extended with more grass varieties, allowing for really complex looking grass. We also have some beautifully designed plants, perfect for making a scene feel alive. There are also example scenes showing how R23 features work, like rigs using Toon Rig, or animation examples, and of course example scenes of nodal setups. In this release, we also see the addition of one new awesome library, and that is the mocap library. It's a collection of common moves like running, sitting, walking, so they can be used in a variety of projects. Expect some amazing quality here. They are professionally shot as Centroid, a company providing mocap data to major blockbuster movies. They are shot at 60fps, and the detail in motion is just incredible. A rig puppet is provided along with the library, and applying motion to it is incredibly simple. 
In the character solval tag, you just drag the character definition tag. And just like that, the move is applied to the character. Here's some of the mocap data available in the library. Here's the list of all new assets in R23, but don't forget, if you haven't had the chance to get your hands on S22, the list is even longer. So that's the content browser, but there are several other features worth mentioning. Python is updated to version 3, offering better performance and security. OBJ import and export now offers support for sequence files, along with other performance improvements and support for PBR materials. We also get to experience the first implementation of uh, USD import and export. Last but not least, FBX supports exporting markers as animation takes and not only including the bind joints in case of character objects. All these will be covered in more detail in separate videos on Maxim's website and YouTube channel. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. This is an amazing release with incredible features and with a first glimpse of cinema's exciting new future.